Another day, another dollar. Stocks, bonds, and commodities on the move. And as we get closer to the all-important non-farm payrolls, we need to ask the serious questions. What happens if we beat? Where will stocks go if we miss? And does it even matter? With economic growth still looking as solid as a fortress, can non-farms even derail this market? So today, that's the question we're asking and answering because the steps you take will make or break your returns for the rest of 2024. We've got a lot to talk about. Let's roll the tape. Welcome everybody to the Daily Recap Show where we talk about stocks and the financial markets. My name is Chase. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit that notification bell as well as the like button and leave a comment for the algorithm. Let's get into it. This is the daily heat map of the S&P 500 and US stocks closed lower on Wednesday as Alphabet's strong earnings boosted optimism for big tech failed to lift the tech heavy indices due to some heavy impact news in the semiconductor space as well as crucial GDP. GDP and labor market data continue to add data pieces to the Federal Reserve's puzzle ahead of the next interest rate decision. And like the data we got today, which was very mixed, markets were very mixed. We saw half the sectors gain, half the sectors lose. Google was the standout here today, along with Amazon for some reason. Anything related to cloud saw outperformance today, except for semiconductors on the back of SMCI news. It sank 30% after a filing revealed that the accounting firm Ernest & Young has resigned from its relationship with the tech company. Ernest & Young is SMCI's auditors and they want nothing to do with this company. And that is why the stock was down 32% today. What also didn't help the overall sentiment was AMD's earnings yesterday. AMD was down 10% today. And all of this culminated in just the tech space or the semiconductor space getting hammered. However, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. We got Meta's earnings after the close. Very mixed earnings as you can see see right here. The stock rose and fell in the after hours on the back of its plans to continue ramp up spending, but it beat on earnings, it beat on revenue. It's just that capital expenses are expected to grow significantly in 2025. And despite the double beat and a slight raise, we saw some very mixed reactions here in the after hours, going to show that Wall Street doesn't like the fact that Meta is still spending a ton of money on AI that's not seeing fruits of their labor just yet. And also Reality Labs continues to be a dumpster fire. Microsoft also dropped earnings. Its stock was up about 2% in the after hours as well. Very good earnings, beat on earnings, beat on revenue, raised guidance, and we saw its cloud division report very, very robust growth as well. That's exactly what you want to see. And all in all, it's just business as usual for Microsoft, a stock that I own in my portfolio, Paycom Software, a small position, but still worth noting, was up 8% in the after hours. It beat EPS, beat revenue, a slight guidance rate raise, but the story was actually margins. We saw a lot of operating leverage. Management did a great job this quarter, as well as share buybacks. Margin guidance lifted by 40%. Operating income was 17% above the street's expectations. A lot of operating leverage now and in the future to come for Paycom. Management also bought back $44 million worth of shares at $163 price target, which is 15% below the closing price of $172. The stock currently trades at 186 and also their cash position grew to 325 million and they have no debt very solid earnings and the market is rewarding the management team for that up eight percent we probably go to 200 before the end of the quarter very very solid looking at the rest of earnings today we've covered microsoft meta eli Lilly saw earnings decline significantly avi reported a slight earnings beat caterpillar missed earnings amgen beat bookings beat adp beat as well and then Starbucks missed by a wide margin. However, we actually got their earnings last week. They just officially reported today. They released their earnings early last week. And we just saw a very, very mixed day in earnings. But the market movers, the heavy hitters, Meta and Microsoft, really surprised to the upside. And I think that's going to help sentiment for the rest of the quarter. We might have a down day tomorrow and we might have a down week. But I think this is really good. And as shareholders, earnings pertains to valuation. And as long-term investors, valuation is really all that matters. But going back into the market in aggregate, looking at the sector analysis, like earnings, we had a very mixed day in the overall market. The best performing sector, XLC, way down in aggregate by the technology space. XLK down 1.59% on the back of semis. And that meant that the SPY was down 0.3% today. Every sector except XLK beat the SPY, but XLY, 
market. So P, industrials, healthcare, and utilities were all down on the day. XLE, XLRE, XLF, and XLB all gained on the day. So very mixed, but the heavy hitters weighing on the overall price action today. We saw much of the same in mid caps and small caps. I mean, value and core did gain in the mid cap space. Same with value in the small cap space. But when you have large cap growth down significantly, that's going to weigh on the overall market because this is 70% of the market. And guys, part of the reason why we saw mixed action was actually because we had very mixed data come out today. GDP, the growth rate, the expectation was 3%. We actually got 2.8%. So it came in slightly lower than expected. However, final demand came in slightly higher than expected. A weird interplay there. So the market was looking at this and saying, hey, growth came in a little bit lower than we thought it would. However, ADP payrolls, private payrolls beat Wall Street forecasts, nearly doubling it. 233K was the reported figure. 115K was the consensus. And this bodes really well for NFP on Friday. We'll see how this affects yields in overall though. We also saw pending home sales increase by 7.4% month over month, 2.6% year over year. We also saw inventory increase and I guess lower Fed funds and lower mortgage rates relative to last year has seen a bit of a pop in pending home sales. That's really, really good. That's what you want to see. And all in all, like earnings, like the market, we've got very mixed data, solid pending home sales, solid employment data, but growth rate coming in below consensus expectations. And that's going to weigh on the market. But when we do look at market breadth, everything looks really, really solid. If you ask me, I mean, the five day and 20 day moving average look a bit shaky again, very noisy, but longer term and medium term averages look intact and you don't really want to fight this type of trend you definitely don't and the trend is higher the path of least resistance is higher the only thing we're waiting for is just this election to be over and done with but looking at the charts guys and the s p 500 was down 0.33 percent the nasdaq 100 down 0.79 percent and then we saw much of the same in all of equities the iwm outperformed though only down 0.14 percent the rsp2 beat the spy and the nasdaq 100 so the broad the market doing better than the market cap weight sectors of the market. We saw volatility did increase ever so slightly, the VIX up 5%. And then looking at yields, we actually just dive into the charts, we can see that yields increased significantly today. The two year yield was up 2% and the 10 year yield was up 1%. So on the back of maybe the economic data, we saw yields rise, but we did see the dollar fall. The dollar was down 0.2% despite yields rising. So a bit of a divergence there. And that did bode well for commodities. Gold was up half a percentage point and silver giving some back crude up two percent all in all a very very mixed day the only real winner today was just gold as well as maybe short sellers we're also seeing some very ugly action here in the after hours probably on the back of meta spending as well as semiconductors the queues are down 0.36 percent spy down 0.23 percent but the iwm showing a little bit of outperformance relatively speaking and looking at the s p 500 again not much has changed i'm just going to go over this very very quickly we are in positive gamma and any dips we do get to the 5070 to the 5775 area you want to buy guys the spy is like coiling up looking for its next move to the upside or downside i think that's going to come after the election the nasdaq 100 still at these all-time highs just below these all-time highs trading right here i mean a good meta report probably meant we go higher but that is probably not going to be the case especially considering sentiment looking a bit damp in the after hours that being said we are in positive gamma and you do want to buy dip sell rips especially if we get to the 20,200 area and the gamma flip zone holds looking at the rty officially back in negative gamma we've been trading above and below the 2240 level for this week do take into consideration that when it comes to the iwm this actually did move up from monday and look at this huge wick here so this means we did get buys especially in the early trade and looking at the one day chart or the one minute chart we saw a huge move on the open this was probably on the back of the data we got as well as some of the earnings we got pre-market however bears came in and took us lower and we were actually down on the day nonetheless this is a very very strong conviction buying it's just that the bears were even stronger from these highs and very very consistent lower lows lower highs here in the iwm and that was mostly on the back of yields yields were up significantly looking at gold that's another new all-time just below the 2800 level i expect to see three thousand dollar gold in the first or second quarter of 2025 so i do think 
we're going to continue seeing upward momentum in gold and any dips we do get you want to buy those because gold is looking very very strong and i do think that based in the current macro environment the election the geopolitical concern as well as monetary policy i do think gold will go higher there's a ton of tailwinds for gold to move higher as well as commodities in general maybe precious metals not so much crude all in all guys we've seen some very ugly price action this earnings season but it's not just earnings it's the economic data we also have some market impact heavy hitting news that only pertains to one semiconductor but it affects overall sentiment in aggregate and we just have to get past this volatile period get past the election and i do think we probably move higher into the end of the year i still remain bullish for the next three months and for the next six months and especially if you're in the right stocks look at stuff like small caps the rsp look at stuff like paycom or google if you're in the right stocks guys you should do very well over the next three to six months but if you're just an index investor the s p 500 i'd be looking to buy at the 5775 the 20,100 area in the nasdaq 100 and in the rty i'd buy where we are right now anything below 2240 looks really really good and the charts for equities just look really really good right now looking at sentiment this is cnn's fear and greed index and guys while sentiment is still firmly in greed and greed is driving the u.s market if we actually look at this in aggregate we were on the precipice of greed extreme greed just last week we've seen a huge pullback in overall sentiment this has to do with the underlying indicators that make up the overall sentiment indicator nonetheless we have seen a pullback in sentiment that mostly has to do with some of the dynamics we're seeing in yields and the dollar and do expect that to continue into the election elections breed uncertainty nonetheless we are going into a very positive period of the year the median two-week returns for the first half in november and the second half in november are very very positive both in excess of one percent and if you actually look at it it's the only two-week periods that beat the first and second half of november are the first half of january the second half of december the first half of October, and then March and July. So really, anything that's going to best the November periods right now are still to come in the next three to six months. And that's just the thing. We are entering the best six months of the year, November to April, October to March, December to May, in a row, the best six-month period. We often see returns in the S&P 500 during this period of 7.1%, 6.7%, and 5.4%, respectively with hit rates all in excess of 70%. Very positive stats. And US stocks perform best in these time periods, mostly due to seasonal factors, holiday spending, year-end bonuses, tax considerations, buybacks, and a couple of other market dynamics. And don't expect it to be different because when we had a bullish year leading up into the next year and the final quarter tends to also be bullish. And guys, we are still very early in this bull market. Bull markets last a lot longer than you think. The average bull market lasts 61 months on the upper end you can see 131 months on the lower end we're looking at 26 months and right now from the 2022 lows the current bull market is 24 months old about two years and we are only in its infancy probably only one third the way through of the average return and that means we can actually go higher not without some consolidation not without some volatility but as long as the earnings picture stays as robust as it is right now particularly for tech stocks comps services stocks, healthcare stocks, and financial stocks. If earnings for those remain robust, things look up and up and this bull market will go higher. We're seeing S&P 500 earnings report at 4.9%. It was 4.7%, the estimate at the start of earnings season. Excluding energy, we're looking at 7.3% growth. Revenue also looking very robust. Margins hanging in there relative to earnings estimates. And guys, we have a good pool of data. 209 companies in the S&P 500 have reported and 78.9% have reported above analyst expectations. Very strong returns right here. And this is going to be the worst earnings quarter for the next four or five quarters and leading up into this quarter we saw a ton of downward earnings revisions in the S&P 500 and I think we've actually overshot some of these earnings revisions because you can see that relative to where both of things earnings will end up in 2024 there's actually a little bit of upside so we could actually see some revisions to the upside into the end of the year as well as into 2025. 2025 earnings looking rather robust as well and all in all guys this bull market will continue Continue as long as earnings remain and earnings do what they're doing and earnings being revised to the downside is actually completely normal look at the historical average right here 
as long as we're above this level, according to history, things are looking really, really good for the earnings picture. And so far, this earnings season in Q3, if you beat on both EPS and revenue, you've seen a massive earnings positive reaction. However, if you miss on both, you've seen a massive decline. So you're getting rewarded for beats and getting punished for misses. You can buck the trend if your guidance is all right. Nonetheless, if you beat on both, very, very good. If you miss on both, not that great. But moving away from equities, guys, something we're seeing, we are experiencing significant inflows into cash, equity, and bond funds, indicating a growing confidence in a diversified asset allocation strategy. So even though equities are rallying, we are seeing more inflows into bonds, into cash as well. And investors are still very happy collecting 4 to 5% on a bond on a high yield savings account versus what we're seeing into equities. But recently, we've seen a huge uptick here in equities, in flows into equities, and do expect that to continue into the end of the year. The better equities perform, the more cash will flow into bonds, into equities as a whole, into the financial markets. But guys, let's look at Let's dive into the macro. U.S. consumer confidence, this was some data we got yesterday, surged in October to the highest level in nine months. The index hit 108.7. The market forecast was 99.5. That's something we almost didn't hear anything about. Consumer confidence is on the up and up. Federal tax receipts looking strong as well. October is pretty much done, guys. And we saw 4.8% growth in this month. Exactly the same what we saw in September. Very, very robust and look at the last trailing 12 months, excluding this December figure right here of negative 8.6%, federal tax receipts has been nothing but strong, indicating strong consumer, strong employee compensation, and high disposable income. And this is exactly what peak performance looks like, guys. 4.8% in federal tax receipts. Now, we are getting the employment numbers on Friday. Now, Bloomberg came out and said that numbers may be dis distorted by the hurricanes that struck the Southeast US as well as the strike in Boeing. So we do need to take these numbers with a grain of salt. Nonetheless, we're looking at an unemployment rate of 4.1% and non-farms around 100,000, although there is a debate on that. We did get some employment figures yesterday. Job openings fell to 7.44 million in September. However, hires rose. And that's just the thing. If hires are going to increase, that probably means some of those job openings need to decrease. And this is very, very positive because job openings are still mean reverting from their highs in 2020. 21 and hires are starting to see a rebound, especially in the last couple of months. That's exactly what you want to see in this type of data set. Although if job openings can actually see a bit of a rebound, we would also welcome that. Looking at earnings for the rest of the week, guys, we had a crazy week so far, and it's only going to get crazier. Tomorrow, Thursday, we have Uber, Peloton, Merck, ConocoPhillips, Siri XM, Mastercard, Estee Lauder, Kellen Nova, Altria Group, just a star-studded open. And then after the close, we have the two big juggernauts, Amazon, Apple, Intel as well, Atlassian. And that's really it. There's still a huge week left in earnings, also on Friday, Thursday, and we had a big week today. Earnings is looking very, very good. Data for the rest of the week, guys. The big things we're going to focus on now is personal income expenditures and then the non-farms and the unemployment rate. The non-farms expectation is 140. That's the consensus. Trading economics say 180K. Goldman is saying 95,000. The consensus is for a 4.1% unemployment rate and then personal income and personal spending. So like personal income outlays or just like wage inflation to come anywhere between 0.2 and 0.4% respectively month over month for income and spending. However, if you've made it up until here, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit the notification bell as well as the like button and leave a comment for the algorithm. Cheers.